Total Recall, 2012, short movie view. Douglas Quaid is married to Kate Beckinsale and builds robots. So I'm not entirely sure why he's complaining, but anyway, he's been having bad dreams, even though they involve Jessica Biel. You know, I'd love to have this guy's problems. So he goes to recall a an organization which specializes in implement, implanting memories in your mind so you think you've done something that you know that you really want to do but that you actually can't do and when he goes there something goes wrong and soon after he's being hunted and people are trying to kill him this is about as loose an adaptation of We Can Remember It For You Wholesale by Philip K. Dick as the 1990 movie was, and frankly, it's a bit of an unnecessary remake. It really doesn't tread any new ground. It follows the original like a blueprint, and yeah, there's really not much new added. There are a couple of, you know, changes made, although mostly it's just rearranging stuff and combining a character or two. The new chain, the, the new stuff is about half and half. Some of it's positive, some of it's negative. Among the positive is that Colin Farrell is more convincing as the everyman, and they play up the spy angle as well, which also, you know, kind of works with Colin Farrell. You believe him as both of those roles. The relationship between Farrell and Beckinsale as this married couple feels more realistic. You know, it feels a little less glossy, perfect, kind of, than in the original. And the production design is quite good, which is not to say it wasn't in the original. It has a nice blend of Eastern and Western cultures, sort of, it has this sort of ghetto area, excuse me, called the colony, where it feels like a lot of people are trying to make it a place they can call home, you know. And it's, it's a, you know, odd mishmash of these various cultures. And yeah, it, it, it creates a fairly nice look for the film. The action is too fast and goes on for too long, and it's very Michael Bay-ish, over CGI'd, you can't completely follow what's going on, and it just kind of overpowers you, but, you know, you can sometimes enjoy it, and you do get into some of the scenes that aren't action scenes. The dialogue is not as good, the humor is pretty much non-existent, characterization is less effective. Brian Cranston is a decent enough villain. If you like this review and want a more detailed one, check below. It's there as a video response. If not, it'll be in the description box. I've reviewed other parts of this series. The links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.